Hey, first grade, ready for your art lesson with your friendly neighborhood art teacher? Your expedition this semester was the amazing bodies of birds. Your guiding questions, how do birds use their body parts to survive? How can we make the Amana Living Garden more bird friendly? And how can our writing help our community learn about birds? <coughs> Excuse me. Your learning targets today, I can observe basic shapes in nature to help with my drawing. I can use basic shapes to draw a ruby-throated hummingbird, and I can add details to my drawings to make them look more realistic. Whew. Before we begin, you will need paper, lined paper or printing paper is fine, a pencil and eraser, and some coloring supplies, crayons, color pencils, markers, whichever you got. Remember, even though this is a tiny bird, we're going to be drawing big. Hummingbirds are little. They are very tiny. They're about maybe the size as tall as one of your regular crayons. And they are on the move, constantly. It's really easier to find a picture of a hummingbird flying than it is sitting still. They are called, the ones we are studying are called the ruby-throated hummingbirds because they have that lovely red color right there on their throat. The rest of them are green. Kind of a dark green, maybe a little bit of a bluish green. And here's a fantastic picture of one of them sitting still. We're going to be working on drawing one today that is flying. So here's the example of the kind of picture we're going to be working on. And we are going to be drawing large, filling up the whole page. One of the things that will help is if you turn your paper to the side. Start with the shape, almost as we always do, of an oval. Now, we're going to overlap that circle this time. We're going to start one triangle that way and another part of a triangle back behind him. Then we're going to do a big square. Well, it's got four sides. It's not really a square. And then we can't forget the long beak. So these are our basic shapes to start off with when we're working on the bird. Next we're going to take away some parts and then add some others like we're going to get rid of this overlapping part where the neck is and we're going to smooth out can see where I drew that so I'm going to come back over and draw there we go and then they have their eye will make this beak a little bit just a little bit bigger and you can go ahead and even color in that beak so there's their long beak for going inside the flowers to get nectar. We're going to get rid of this line right here. And we want to get rid of this straight line back behind. Now, let's talk about the wings and the tail feathers. We're going to take to the end of each one and we're going to make one, two, three, four, five, about five of the bump lines. We'll do the same thing going down one, two, three, four, five. But since there's more of this one, we can add a few more. Six, 
seven. That should be about enough. And I'm going to get rid right now of that very straight line and make sure that he only has the bumpy line. And then we're going to do the same thing down here on his tail feathers. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five. I'll come down there like that. Now, we're starting to get the edges of the feathers drawn. We're going to start at one of the bumps, and we're going to bring our line back. Not all the way down, but a good part of the way down. I want to come down to each one. So there's the back wing. Now, remember, you can turn your paper a little bit if it helps. I'm going to go down, down. Now, this one will turn his feathers, his wings, I should say, move a little bit. And then we're going to do the tail feathers. They do go all the way up to the body. And I forgot to erase. There we go. So, now, I'm going to get rid a little bit shorter of that. And you can get curve where the line is. We're going to draw little hummingbird toes. And some more. Draw the bottom of that. And next we need to do the ruby throat. Alright, so now we've drawn our ruby throated hummingbird. We're going to work on coloring. I'll give you some tips on coloring. I'm going to find a dark green. I'm going to find a light green and oops, a red and a black. So, whoops, going to lightly color green, a green, light green, all over. Except for his throat. Then I want to take my dark green and I want to go over some of these lines, make them stand out, give them a little bit more shadows, details to them. Same thing for underneath. And they have a little dark spot on top of their heads. Then looking again, the red on their throat. And their beaks. And their eyes. And their toes. Are all black. And I can finish up down here. Since I've got enough time. And I can add those little details. And there's my ruby throated hummingbird. 
So your task today is to follow my steps and draw a flying hummingbird. Don't forget to color it in. If you have enough time left over, use the method of looking for shapes and draw a hummingbird that is sitting still and color it. Alright, first grade. I'll see you later.